What is up guys, Marcellus Williams, aka The Swole Fester, here to educate you on health, fitness, and social well-being. And before we get into this video, I just have to have, <laughs> wow, I'm getting so much I can't talk. No, seriously, I wanna give a huge thank you and shout out to all of you for helping this channel to reach 8,000 subs. It was so awesome, I literally got home from uh, the San Francisco trip this past Tuesday. Um, got online to check up on like, you know, some clientele stuff. Went and looked on my channel page and noticed like, yo, we hit 8,000 subs. And I'm pretty sure we just hit 7,000 um, last month. If not, then like, you know, the month before, a month and a half ago, pretty much. So very grateful to all of you guys. Thank you, you guys already know how much it means to me. You know how much it means to me to know that my content and my channel is beneficial enough for you guys to like, you know, to like the videos, to share, to sub. It means the world to me. To those of you who are new to the channel, whether you um, came from Brendan's channel um, because of the collaboration that we did on his channel, or you just so happened to find my channel recently, I just wanna say welcome. Um, just know from the start, if you, you can't already tell, this is not your traditional fitness channel in the sense of it's informative. I want every video that I do to be informative or beneficial in some way, shape, or form in relation to health, fitness, or social well-being. You're not going to get a lot of the usual stuff that you get with other fitness channels. Um, not that I knock all of it, but um, I do knock some of it because I think a lot of it's just stupid, mindless entertainment or something, or constantly trying to you know sell you something. But um, you know things like you know uh, full days of eating. Uh, lifestyle vlogs, stuff like that. You guys aren't gonna get a whole lot of that from me, with the exceptions of like, you know, if I go to an expo or a special trip like I did in San Francisco, I wanna take you guys with me and show you things like that, but the closest you'll really get to daily vlogs on this channel will be like videos like this, workout related videos, where I'm explaining what I'm doing or explaining different concepts behind what I'm doing so that you can know the why behind what I'm doing so that if you try to replicate it, you'll know why you're doing what you're doing. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just wanted to kind of address that. Now that's out of the way, letting you guys know right now, I'm actually about to head to Metroflex Gym. Gonna get a workout in with my boy Michael. You guys seen him on the channel before. If not, you'll see him today. He's also a 74 kg power lifter, stupid strong. Um, he has his own programming as far as I think he squats and bench today. Today's a bench day for me, but he's gonna be joining me for my accessory work. And this is actually, um, you guys saw day one in my last video. You saw what day one on the new training block for this uh, strength meso cycle looks like so now you're gonna be seeing day two and at the end of this video i'm gonna be taking you guys just through all of the programming so you can see what it looks like and then during the actual workout itself i'm probably gonna do a voiceover if i don't just talk to you guys like raw it'll probably be a voiceover because it's really loud in metroflex explain to you guys kind of like my program set up in terms of the difference between a workout program that's based upon movement patterns versus body part splits. Because a lot of you seem to be confused because a lot of you guys are like, hey, what's going on with Swolfester? Do you still like full body? Or like, it seems like some of your days are full body. It seems like some of your days are like upper, lower, or some of your days look like, like you're doing like all push muscle groups, all pull muscle groups, you know, including the legs for the push and pulls. It's like, what's going on? So I'm going to explain to you guys kind of like what the difference is between focusing on movement patterns and then uh, focusing on body part splits and kind of what I'm doing with the main movements versus the accessory and explaining why you know focusing on movement patterns for me right now and just having a higher focus on frequency is important and kind of how it just all relates so you guys can have a better understanding of that and really why I think you should be more focused on movement patterns instead of getting too fixated with just straight body part splits. Don't get me wrong, when we're talking about hypertrophy, yes, you want to train each muscle group twice a week. You guys, you guys know that, you've seen my videos over stuff like that, but you're gonna have a lot more clarity on like why my programming is set up the way it is. But for now, let's head to the gym. All right, guys, so here with the homie Michael once again. Uh, for those who don't know you, man, because I actually have some new subs now. Your boy's making it up there. now, nah, but uh, just tell them a little, like, you know, where they can find you on Instagram, uh, your best lifts, all that good stuff, weight class. Um, my name is Michael C. I'm a 74 kilo or 163-pound USAPL powerlifter. Um, I just recently competed at the Arnold in Ohio, and I won the A7 Barker Bra Challenge. Um, you can find me on Instagram at M A S E A Y J R. I know that's kind of confusing, but that's all good. So it'll be on screen, and then tell <laughs> um, them all your best, best lifts. My best squat is is 556 pounds. My best bench is 358 pounds, and my best deadlift is 601 pounds. And all guys, all at the body weight of 163. The 74 kg boys out here yeah, representing, yeah. putting that work. We, we ain't huge, yeah, you know? but, but we decently built. Yeah. We're moving yeah. some weight. Yeah. You know, I'm not Larry Will. Not, not at all, not at <laughs> all. We're also natural, so. <laughs> no offense, no offense. But anyway, um, yeah, so um, Michael's about to do his squats, and then we're gonna get into bench and the accessory work, so you guys can see all of that. So enjoy the workout, enjoy the voiceover. All right, guys, getting right into the topic at hand, which is, of course, focusing on movement patterns versus body parts when it comes to how you set up your routine or how you basically split up your days, you know, upper, lower, 
versus maybe saying, oh, a bench day or a squat day. And pretty much, guys, these two things actually go in hand in hand. They're not completely separate, but let's kind of like just get a few distinctions out of the way first. So, of course, you guys pretty much already know that when we're talking about a body part split, you're pretty much grouping your... Um, your days based upon just that body parts right so if we're talking about something like a traditional bro split which you guys know I'm not about at all then that would be like pretty much just hitting each muscle group once a week so on that particular day say Monday's your chest day you're just focusing on that muscle group now more ideally you're gonna set up your body part splits into something like you know a push pull where you do all your push muscle groups for both upper and lower so for example you may squat and bench on that day because those are both push based movements even though you're still hitting your legs and your chest your triceps and shoulders and then your pull day would be like you know back biceps and hamstrings so you may do deadlifts on that day pull ups rows leg curls etc then of course there's upper and lower where you simply have upper body days hit all the muscle groups in your upper body and then lower body days where you hit all the muscle groups in your lower body and then there's things like you know push pull legs and then of course um ideally things like full body routines where you're actually hitting pretty much a little bit of everything every single workout session you do that pretty much every other day or every 48 hours and the idea behind why things like you know push pull legs or push pull or upper lower or even full body is more ideal than um a bro split once again comes down to frequency right because if you're hitting each muscle group at least twice a week you're going to be able to get a whole lot more total volume into those uh, muscle groups for each week and as we all know total volume is the most important thing when it comes to building up hypertrophy and you guys have seen me do videos over that before so you guys can easily just search you know um uh, the swole fester full body routines or the swole fester um, muscle hitting muscle groups two times a week just things like that you guys have some, hopefully most of you have seen videos over stuff like that before and the importance of frequency well the same thing is true guys when you're trying to get strong on a particular movement simply put I always, as I try to explain to you guys, building muscle is simply a physiological response to your training. But building strength, that is a skill. It is something that you have to practice. And basically, strength is specific to the movement you're working on, right? If you do a bunch of push ups, you're going to get better at push ups. If you do a bunch of pull ups, you're going to get better at pull ups. If you do a bunch of squats, you're going to get better at squats. A bunch of bench, you're going to get better at bench, and so on and so forth. So, the reason that I have certain days that may, if we look at it from a body part perspective, look like, oh, this is an upper day, this is a lower body day, oh, on this day, it's kind of like a full body day, is because my programming, as far as the main movements, is not focused so much on muscle groups, it's focused on the movement patterns that I'm uh, competing with, being bench, squat, and the deadlift. As a power lifter, my goal is to get as strong as I can on those three movements so it's all about once again frequency I want more frequency so that I'm practicing with the movements more times throughout the week because more practice is going to make me more proficient at the movement but then it's also to help me get more total volume in with the movements as well because more total volume is going to help me to build strength as well as help me to build muscle with those movements so that's the big thing as to why like my program isn't on the basis of necessarily like an upper lower or a push pull or anything like that because as you guys are going to see when I go through these programs some of my days look like straight push days some of my days look like more like straight pull days some look like upper lower and then there's even one day that kind of looks more like a full body or it can be seen as a push day either or just because there's like squats but then there's also upper body stuff on that day as well now the reason these two things go hand in hand guys is because even if you're someone who's not focused on specific movements maybe you don't care about the big three you're focused on just maximizing your muscle growth you still want to focus on those movements that are going to be the most bang for your buck your big compound movements even outside of the big three things like your pull-ups your overhead press weighted dips your big compound movements are going to help put the most size on you not that accessory work isn't important clearly it is because you guys can see that the gym closed early and we actually went back to my place to do our accessory work but my point is you want to have a handful of movements that you focus on getting better at because if you can't gauge your progression on specific movements it's really hard to gauge if you're getting stronger and as you guys know there's a direct connection between strength and hypertrophy even though one focuses a little bit more on intensity the other one focuses a little bit more on volume you need both to build both right you need a certain level of intensity as in load on the bar in order to build muscle and you need a certain amount of you know your minimum effective volume to build muscle and you need the a minimum effective volume to build strength as well so when we look at all those things in combination it makes sense to have a focus on frequency regardless of what your split is like you want to have a high frequency for your body part splits where you're hitting each muscle group at least twice a week yes but if you're able to hit it more than that even three times a week even though yes I know there's a lot of research coming out showing that oh there's no need to hit a muscle group more than twice a week so long as volume is equated but if we're being realistic it's just hard to match the amount of total weekly volume you're gonna get if you're hitting something you know three or four times a week 
versus only twice a week. And beyond that, we have to think about the fact that once again, if we're practicing and moving more often, we're gonna get more efficient at it. If I'm squatting three times a week, I'm gonna get better at the squat than if I'm just squatting twice a week. And since it's gonna help me get better at it and get stronger at it and more technically proficient at it, potentially, even from a hypertrophy standpoint, it means I'm gonna be able to move more total weight on the squats. Why? Because I'm getting stronger on it faster. That more total weight is gonna add to the total volume. And that is what's going to allow me to not only get stronger, but to build more total muscle. So don't get caught up in just thinking like, okay, just twice a week for everything and that's good. If you can push higher frequency than that, which is one of the reasons why I enjoy full body routines from a hypertrophy standpoint, but if you're not doing that, if you're doing something that's set up more like this, where you're focusing more on frequency of movement patterns, that's still gonna help you. Cause even with this program, guys, I'm still hitting everything quite a few times a week. I'm squatting two times a week, deadlifting twice a week, bench pressing three times a week. So I'm still pretty much hitting each muscle group actually um, three times a week minimum as far as like, you know, my, my upper body, as far as my shoulders, my back and my legs, everything, everything is getting stimulated and it's all because of the frequency. But I just want to explain kind of the difference between that focusing on movement patterns versus body part splits, but how the two still go hand in hand. They're not completely separate and why having a greater emphasis on frequency and total weekly volume, as I've explained on this channel before, is most important when it comes to building strength or muscle mass. But that is pretty much all I had to say, guys. Enjoy the rest of the video. And like I said, if you want to see what the entire program breakdown for this current mental cycle looks like make sure you stay through to the very end i'll talk to you guys next time all right guys so that is it for the workout and the voiceover as you guys clearly could see <laughs> Um, Michael and I actually had to come and do the accessory work here at the crib. Reason being is that um, the Metroflex gym actually closes at four on Sundays. I was not aware of that. So we got through our main work, we got the bench work and all that kind of stuff. Then we had to come home and do the accessory work because we are about that life and accessory work is important. Anyway, um, long story short, we didn't get to like do like, we did everything. The only difference is we replaced um, face pulls with external rotation with rear delt flies. We weren't able to go really heavy on the rows because the heaviest dumbbells I had are 50s. Um, but everything else was pretty much on point as far as like, you know, the dumbbell shoulder press and uh, the tempo pulse and everything like that. So now that all of that is out the way, I'm going to go ahead and take you guys through what my current programming looks like. So you guys know that with the old, um, the old meso cycle, like both the first meso cycle and the meso cycle after that, because this is my third meso cycle that I'm doing under Brendan. It was all about like movement prep focus. So now we are focused on actually building more strength. So the movement prep focus phases were all about technique. This is about actually building strength. So of course the volume is a little bit is a little bit higher, and um, the intensity is higher as well because we're trying to you know push more workload to build more muscle, build more strength, etc. So going through it, day one, which you guys saw in the last video, that was the day with the squats, the deadlifts. So it starts off with uh, competition squats. I work up to two heavy sets the first set is a set of three at rpe7 and then the second set is a, a double at rpe7 and then next week it'll be rpe8 so the first week was rpe7 yesterday was also rpe7 i pretty much did the same thing as i did um last week but it's, i think last i think that first week i did like my triple at 345 my double at 355 this time i did my triple around 355 and my double around 363 to 365 whatever it was for kilograms so next week i'll go even even heavier because it'll actually be at rp8 then after that i have back down sets three sets of three with a certain percentage of my top set so for example yesterday my three sets of three were 341 pounds because that was seven percent less of my top set which was 363 but then next week it'll probably be a little bit more like nine percent taken away just because the work the top set will be even higher at a rp8 so that's what that looks like um, and then for competition deadlifts, I work up to one set of two, so a heavy double. Um, RP7 was yesterday, so next week will be RP8. And then I have back down sets that are four sets of two, and those are just set for me already. So like the first week, it was like 385 pounds for my four by two back down sets. Yesterday, it was 395 pounds. So next week, it's probably gonna be, yeah, it's 405 pounds. And then after that, it's just my accessory work. So I have Bulgarian split squats, three sets of seven at RP7, and then I also have um, I have uh, planks, three sets of 30 seconds with as much weight on my back as possible for the planks. So that's what day one looks like on this meso cycle. It's pretty much my heavy squat and deadlift day, and it's a lower body day if you want to look at it that way. Like I said, like hopefully you guys now understand like the difference between focusing on movements versus on um, like body parts. But that's like my heavy lower body day, right? 
then day two, which is what you guys saw today, is pretty much all about the bench press. So as you guys saw, it's kind of a similar setup to the squats. Two heavy sets. The first one was a triple at RP7. Then the second is a double at RP7 as well. Um, you guys saw that with today. I did 282 or 283 for my triple. It moved more like an RP6, but I didn't bump it up. I'm like, okay, well, I'll just do RP7 on my double. And I start off with like 293. It still moved at RP6, so then I went to 298, and that moved at the RP7. Then I had back down sets, three sets of three, with 7% less than my top set. So that really would have been 279 pounds, but the closest we can really get to that with kilograms is 275 pounds, so we did that. Um, and then you guys saw that I had two sets of three uh, at an RPE six of tempo bench press. So the tempo is three seconds on the way down for the eccentric, a normal competition pause, and then I just press up. So there isn't really a tempo for pressing up. It's like a three, one, zero tempo. Once again, the point of that is just to work on more control, stability, and maintaining my tightness as I'm bench pressing. Since sometimes if I bench too quickly, I have a tendency of letting my chest sink in instead of focusing on keeping my scapula retracted and depressed and really making sure that I'm pushing my chest out as I'm rowing the bar to my chest rather than just dropping it down on there. And then after that, you guys saw what the accessory work was for today. So we have controlled tempo pull-ups, um, seal rows of choice. I'm going to be doing dumbbell seal rows. I did kind of a weird variation of that today just because we did it here at the crib. Um, dumbbell overhead press for four sets of 12 at RP8. And then usually it will be face pulls for three sets of 15 at RP8. In the, in the controlled pull-ups, it's just three sets of four. I'm just going to keep increasing the tempo pretty much. Or I may even like keep the tempo the same and gradually add weight to it because I'm strong enough to do that. We'll see. And then with the seal rows, it sh uh, should usually be three sets of eight RP8. Once again, the heaviest demos I have were 50, so obviously that didn't go down. And then you guys will see the rest of the programming, like as I show you the day. So I'm still going to take you through right now. So I will rest Monday. So we go Saturday, Sunday, rest Monday, then Tuesday. And this is where you guys get confused because it's like, wait, is it upper, lower or not? Because this looks more like a full body day. So I have high bar squats. I have one top set of four at an RP7, then two back down sets of five with 7% less than whatever my top set is at. Then I have bench press for a top set of four at an RP8, followed by a four by five for back down sets with 240 pounds. Then dumbbell overhead press once again, but this time it's four sets of eight at RPE six, tricep push downs, and um, so four sets of 10, and then lateral raises for five sets of 12 at RPE eight. So some of you are gonna be like, well, is that full body because he's doing bench and squats, so he's technically hitting like his entire body, or is it just like a full push workout because he's got bench, squat, tricep press down, shoulder presses, or all push workouts, once again, it's not based off split, a body part split, it's based off movements. And that's why I emphasize that so much that you guys aren't confused by that. If you still are, leave a question in the comment down below, you know I'll answer it. Um, so then that's what Tuesdays look like. Wednesdays are my secondary deadlift day, so I come in and I do competition deadlifts. Now on this meso cycle, my secondary deadlift day, the weight doesn't change. It's always 405 pounds, but the sets will increase each week. So last week I did four sets of two with 405 pounds. So uh, this week I'll be doing five sets of two with 405 pounds. It's just another day to get more volume in, um, to work on the technique, but not push it so much to where I overexert my body because it's just really taxing to pull conventional twice a week. You can get away with doing that with sumo, or if you pull conventional one day, then sumo on another like I was doing during my movement prep phase. But when you're pulling conventional twice a week, just due to the nature of the movement and the way um, it works with the nervous system, all the muscles involved being so close to the spine, you just have to be really careful with your recovery. So that's why that's set up that way. And then after the deadlifts, I have uh, superset leg extensions with leg curls for three sets of 12 at RPE7. And then I do uh, side planks for three sets, holding as long as I can. And then ab exercise of choice, three sets of 15 at an RPE9. You guys know I like to do like weighted ab movements or hanging ab movements, so it'll be something like that. And then Thursdays, which are the last training days of the week, is just my pretty much like my higher volume upper body day, if you want to look at it that way. So I have competition bench press for five sets of six with 240 pounds, and that's what it will be every time on this muscle cycle for all the weeks. It was five sets of six with 240 last week, it'll be five sets of six with 240 this week, and it'll be that next week and then for the final week as well, just because it's just a way to get more total volume in. I'm still increasing the weight on the other two bench days. It's just a third bench day to like really boost more volume for more total workload, work on technique, etc. Then after that, um, I have a chest supported row of choice. I've been using the hammer strength row that you guys see me use before on this day for four sets of 12 at RP7. Then I have lat pull downs for four sets of 15 at RP7. So just normal lat pull downs now, not the single arms that I was doing during the movement prep phase. 
Then I have a um, neutral grip reverse cable fly. So five sets of 15 RP8. You guys will see what the difference is with the neutral grip versus the normal cable flies that I do. And then uh, an arm superset of choice, five sets of 15 at an RP9. So I superset a tricep movement and a bicep movement. So yeah, that, my friends, is what your boy's programming looks like on the semester cycle. Like I said, it's a lot more fun than what the movement prep phase was. Not that the movement prep phase was not important. It was definitely important for um, working on some faulty movement patterns, just building a better technique so that now I can push the weight more, but more efficiently. Because that's the thing you always have to keep in mind. Proper technique, like we always say on this channel, lets you live stronger for longer. It, yes, it helps with preventing injuries, but it helps with more optimal performance as well. But yeah, I think that's everything. That's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you did not leave a comment down below, let me know what I can do to get better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later.